Now that the ban list has been out for a few days, I want to do a proper discussion on the implications for this brand new format. So let's dive on into it, shall we? You'll have to excuse me if I'm not super energetic because hello, ladies and gentlemen, is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here. I've been extremely tired the past couple of days. I've actually been able to have a few days off. So I apologize that I'm not super energetic. Hope you're having a fantastic day, however. Um, I want to talk about the new format and implications that we could see moving forward into 2024. I've done a little bit of play testing and by a little bit, I mean... I tried to build Centurion uh, with Tikaboo at one. I ended up just selling my Centurion cards. We are still the self-appointed Centurion King. <laughs> but uh, one TC Boo is just not going to work, man. Like, you might be thinking, Avery, one Tikaboo playing Centurion isn't really going to kill the deck. You could still play the Horus cards. I don't like the Horus builds of Centurion just because of the fact if anybody's going to have bad luck bricking on horse monsters not named Enseti, it's going to be me. So there's that. I really like the idea that in Centurion, you can play so many hand traps, 15 like I did, and see success with it. The problem is, is that now that it's more on the radar, more people know how to beat the deck, which, spoiler alert, you just got to negate the first monster we summon, and then you're off to the races. You negate the Trudea or the Primera, we're probably not going to have follow-up. We're going to lose the ball game, and we might as well just open up our booty booty butt cheeks and tell you to come on in, because uh, it's going to hurt. <laughs> so there's that. Um, Tikaboo at one really hurts the deck, especially too, because Tikaboo is a floodgate that's good going first or second. Um, so being able to kind of lock out the opponent, depending on what deck that they're playing with Tikaboo, and it grinds them down to a halt, just like how if you get hand trapped once, you're grinded down to a halt, but you have the Tikaboo to fall back on. We do have things like Bonfire coming out in, uh, Maze of Millennia, but Bonfire, when you're only target is Trudea. Like I was really sold on Bonfire at first in Centurion and it's like if you get Bonfire into Trudea and they draw you then you just lose anyway if you didn't open up the stand up. So take that for what you will. Um, moving forward you're gonna have to apologize. I've got a sore on the inside of my mouth so it's kind of hard to talk. Um, moving forward though I have been messing around a little bit with Fire Kings with Populous and all the Snake Eyes stuff. That deck is pretty fun. It's definitely very complicated. Um, but it's still a very fun deck to be messing around with. Rescue Ace is still going to be a fantastic uh, deck, even with Airlifter at one. The deck is still going to be good. Snatch Steel being able to take an X Purely Noir with five more materials is really sexy. I'm not going to lie. It's not worth buying a $40 plus dollar Ultra Rare out of Spell Ruler. I don't know why you wasted your money doing that, <laughs> but if you did, good for you, Sugar Boo Bear. Um, I hope you turn around and sell it, make your money. Um, but Outside of that, I think that this format is still going to continue to be diverse, but something that I'm really interested to see is going second decks. In Maze of Millennia, we get Infection Buzz King, which is a rank 8 exceed. So decks like rank 8 Axis that are basically just piles of good cards that are level 8 monsters for the most part, maybe 1 to 2 Grand Majus, maybe Necro Base, depending on your build... You can now have the ability to play three desires again, and you can play these 50 to 60 card builds of rank eight axis and just make a bunch of level eights, make a bunch of rank eight exceeds, and just OTK the opponent. If you're someone like my dad, who is a scrub because he played Mystic Mind for four years and was just ignorant to the game around him, which made him a scrub, unfortunately, um, then you're main decking things like Skill Drain, even though you shouldn't be doing that. Don't take my dad's builds as gospel because his builds are terrible. Um, I'm just being honest. Uh, you don't need to be main decking floodgates like skill during because you're a going second deck that just wants to OTK the opponent. You should already be beating them and diving into your side deck into game two or three. So you should never need those skill drains unless you're going first. So take that for what you will. At the same time, even though generic good decks like rank, rank 8 Axis are getting more support, they have the horse cards, we're getting the horse field spell along with more horse monsters in Phantom Nightmare that maybe decks like Rank 8, rank eight Axis will be able to play, or maybe Horus can just become a OTK dot deck with all these new going second cards in the meta. I feel like Sky Striker also has a chance to potentially do well. You know, three Upstart Goblin be making your deck 37 cards, theoretically, 
only thing you got to worry about is getting hit with Joel and Lockbird. And again, if you're a going second deck, you're playing these going second cards. You can use Upstart Goblin, and maybe you have a Triple Tactics Talon in your hand, and you can just go Triple Tactic, take control of a monster, look at the opponent's hand, whatever the case may be, and that's really good. That was a play that I did in Centurion several times at the regional, and just a bunch in general in playtesting. I would summon Primera, search for stand-up, my opponent would draw me, and I'd be like, thank you, Sugar Boo Bear, and you activate the talents, rip another card out of their hand, and you just proceed to win from that point, because now the opponent's down two cards in their hand and it's also going to be interesting to see too what's going to happen with hand traps because from what talking of the format i've done with our homie bally d he's thinking that hand traps are going to drop down in size and i am inclined to agree because you know we were playing 12 hand traps on average in most of our decks like when you look at the meta in general in what is technically the current format because of the fact that decks have such a high ceiling to explode at the same time, because everybody's playing 12 to 15 hand traps, most decks are fair. You know, most decks, even right now with this new ban list, can't play through an Ash and an Imperm. Their turn's just going to end. So by cutting back on some hand traps, you lose that ability to just Ash and Imperm the opponent and probably win by the next turn, depending on how you open. But also, too, it eliminates dead cards in your hand. Because let's be honest, that even though hand traps are good, they do take away resources out of your hand. So if you're playing with a five card hand going second, three of them are hand traps. When you draw for turn, you're only playing with a three card hand. Even if the opponent's board is basic, which if you ash an imperma meta deck, I would argue 99% of the time, they're still going to be able to end on at least something like an SP Little Knight. Which is not bad, especially in a very simplified game state. So if you top deck something like a Fenrir... SP Little Knight essentially forces you to skip your battle phase. You're going to have to summon the Fenrir, run over the Little Knight, then use its effect to search another Fenrir, hope that you don't get drolled. <coughs> Excuse me. And then go from there. So by cutting back on some hand traps, it allows combo decks to have more gas, and it also allows combo decks that seem like they're kind of garbage, like what I said in my YouTube short about Raid Raptors, which, spoiler, I still think the deck is garbage. It might give those kinds of decks a chance to actually kind of shine. Now, am I saying Raid Raptor is going to be a tier one deck? No. Um, you literally just like fart on them with like two hand traps and you win. I know that Yaxine has posted combos where like they can play through Droll, they can play through Nib. That's cute. But at the end of the day, if they don't open those two Wing Beast monsters, then like they just lose and it has to be two wing beasts with different names so like if they open up double fuzzy lanius then they're crapping their pants because they just can't play unless they have the extra gas to open but again if they don't go first they're probably going to lose because raid raptor at least in my testing is one of those decks that yeah you can push it to 12 hand traps but if you're just breaking on hand traps and not drawing your wing beasts you're just going to lose and so it's going to be really interesting to see what decks do moving forward that are we going to see decks, you know, maxing out on talents with like nine hand traps and then the other non-engines like, I don't know, Desires and Snatch Steel. Like it's, it's going to be really interesting in that regard. Like I don't think you're going to need to be playing 12 to 15 hand traps in your decks anymore. I would say that you could get away with playing nine hand traps at the minimum and then you cut Abyss Dweller for, I don't know, a Baguska in your extra deck. Because Abyss Dweller is not going to be needed in this upcoming format. Well, what are you negating? Like, some Fire King monsters in the graveyard? The one dude at your local is still playing fucking Tear Element? Like, I don't think a lot of people are going to be on Unchained. Because you have to play a second of the Blue Dog. And that Blue Dog sucks. So, I think Unchained is still going to be like Tier 2. But I don't feel like it's going to be all that great. So I, I still feel like moving forward in this new format, it's going to be Year of the Fire. Like, let's just put that out there. Fire King, Rescue Ace, they're going to be good. Snake Eye is going to be played in everything that it can. Sprite is going to be a more, somewhat more consistent sub-engine, even though Starter at 2 and 3 is kind of an irrelevant point at that rate. Um, Runic is still going to be played. Probably not the stun build, because are you really going to play one of each of Floodgates, or are you just going to max out on, like, Summon Limits and skill drains, and hope to God that, like, you don't brick. Like, you know, it's kind of whatever. Um, but yeah, it's still going to be a diverse format. It's still going to be a fun format. Um, I'm just waiting for people to post deck profiles and stuff so, like, I can actually copy people's builds and, like, perfect them in my own way and, and see what these new decks can do, especially post Phantom Nightmare. Phantom Nightmare doesn't offer a lot in terms, in terms of power-creeping competitive landscaping, 
but the things that it does offer should be noted, especially when we're talking about things like Snake Eye Populous, uh, the new Horus cards, and sadly, the Ubel cards are going to be easy bulk pickups to get. If you want to play Ubel, don't worry, Sugar Boo Bear. The deck sucks giant donkey booty balls, and uh, it's going to be cheap, so don't worry because the deck is garbage. Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. What are you most excited about for this format? Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.